we are called to recognize that children first and foremost belong to God. He's entrusted them and their care to you as you raise them up. And so he's expecting you to be a good steward of his gift that he's entrusted to you. God in his goodness gives us children as gifts. And parents not only have the responsibility of caring for this gift, but you also have the wonderful privilege of enjoying this gift. And I know these children bring you joy. I know there are moments where they bring you a little bit of frustration as well, but a lot of joy. And so take that in as they grow and as they mature. Because children belong to God and are given by grace as gifts to you, it's only proper and appropriate that they be dedicated back to Him. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, we read the story about Hannah. And Hannah was barren. She was without child. And as they would go to the temple each year and give their offerings, Hannah was always so distraught because others were having an opportunity to give something that she didn't. And there was a point in 1 Samuel where we read Hannah just broke down before the Lord and prayed, God, if you will give me a child, I will give him back to you. And we see that take place as later on when Hannah is given the answer to that prayer and she's giving up to Samuel. She not only dedicates him to the Lord, but she gives him over to the church to raise. Now that's not what we're doing today. <laughs> but we are looking forward to being a part of your child's and your family's journey. In Luke 2.22, we read that Mary and Joseph brought their infant son Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. And in the same way, you are bringing your children and you are presenting, first of all, yourselves. You're not just bringing your child and say, okay, God, you gave her to us, you gave her to us, now fix him or fix her. No, what you were doing is you're saying we're presenting ourselves first of all. And we're asking you to equip us to be the best parents that we can possibly be for this gift that you've entrusted to us. So, let me just ask, right now, for those of you joining us online, the families that are here have brought family. They brought aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas, papas and mamas and geekies and nanas and kikis and yeah, thank you. And, and all kinds of other folks with them. And so for those of you who have come to celebrate with your children or your brothers or sisters today, thank you for being here. I know it means the world to them. And a, and a season in this year where so much has been canceled and where family gatherings are even being discouraged, we're glad that you were here and we encourage you to be here and journey with them. Parents, let me remind you of what Moses gave to the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7 especially, but I'm going to read the first nine verses of this chapter just to give you a clue on what's happening in your responsibilities. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord gave, the Lord your God directed me, being Moses, to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you your children, their children after them, may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. Here's the kicker, parents, you need to remember this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them, bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Parents, it's your instruction to do that, to train up your child in the way they should go. And the way that happens is as you live out in front of them, as you remind them daily of who God is as you lie down, 
as you get up, as you walk, as you sit, you're constantly reminding them of God's goodness, of God's grace, of God's compassion, of His mercy, and His love. As you love God with all your heart and soul and strength, you will be setting an example for your children to emulate. And guess what? If you love God and one another, you will model a wonderful love for God that we pray your children will want for themselves one day. So that when the Holy Spirit speaks to them and pricks their heart, they will respond in desiring to invite Him in to be their Lord and Savior. Parents, I want to ask you to just stand where you are right now. And I'm going to share a charge with you and then ask you to respond. So moms and dads, if you would stand with your child where you are. In just a moment, I'm going to be inviting you up, two families at a time, to come to the altar symbolically. And so let me just ask you this. By coming to the altar before God and before His people, do you declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? If this is your desire, will you please say we do? So that your child may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers, do you vow with God's help and in partnership with the local church, hopefully no Greek Baptist church, but to partner with the local church to provide them a Christian home of love and peace, to raise them in the truth of God's instruction and discipline, and to encourage them to one day trust Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. If this is your desire, we please say we do. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and be seated, and I'm going to call up two families at a time, one from this side and one to this side. I'll just ask you to watch the camera, but to come down the center aisle and then come to the appropriate side, just kind of stand here as we have a moment of dedication for you and your children. Everybody can participate. So 
So is your mommy and daddy that got this whole thing going. Church, this is Sean and Katie and Arlo, and we present him to you today as well. And we are excited that we get to watch Arlo grow up into the man that God has created him to be. Look at both Arlo as well. I guess I better make sure I give you the right one. Thank you. Let me invite y'all to sit down there in a moment. We're just going to have a prayer of dedication over all the families. Let me invite Ryan and Jordan Kidd and Dallas and Jimmy Allen Forbes. children for the first time that I've seen all over the place in photos. How are you, Emerson? You have some big, beautiful eyes. Do you know that? I bet nobody's ever told you that. that. <laughs> um, let me see. Who do you look most like? Do you look most like mom? Do you look most like mommy or most like dad? It is a hot baby. We're going to go, just because mommy's not going to want to say that I'm going with mommy today. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Your grandma shows me pictures all the time. Yes, she does. And it's such a pleasure. Thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, goodness. And this one is for Emerson. Just for you. Hudson, 
Can I hold you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an idea of way back. Don't we? How can you mount it with you? But the Olsen's Greg Hudson today to dedicate him. And I bet Lottie doesn't weigh as much as you do. And I know Lottie too is family to her, so I'm not going to go ahead and. Oh, goodness. Hi. Oh, I know. It's scary, guys. Did you mess me up too? Like, this is Lottie. <laughs> Can I see this? Can I see this? This is Lottie. And she's excited to be here as well. Thank you all for bringing Lottie and Hudson and dedicating. Oh, see, she wants to come back to me. So what happens when I give them up, they cry and want to come back to the past. Come on, the past are in. He did it again, he thinks so. This one is for this Lottie. And then we've got a little older one, Faith, Family, and Fun for Mr. Hudson to remember this day by. Oh, you're welcome. And we got the wet man with Hi. Hi. I'm going to take this off for you, just because I can. <laughs> Rachel and Rachel and Josh Witt and their kids, Deacon and Grace and Carson, come with them to celebrate with Judith as well. Can you trust me, Okay. Keep some crying. <laughs> I know you've never seen me outside of the church, have you? But it's pretty crazy in here.
uh, children who are presenting them. We're going to have a prayer of dedication over each of these children. So why don't you just stand where you are so that you can kind of maneuver if you want to around a little bit. Let me just invite you, family, to lay hands on your family. Tell you what, while y'all are doing that, I'm going to move the volume so that those online can see the beauty of this moment as well. Sorry if I just made y'all dizzy online. Let's pray for these families. God, we do come into your presence during this holy moment. And again, Father, it's a different moment because we're living in a different time. But Father, we do thank you for each one of these children, these gifts that you've entrusted to these families. And Father, as aunts and uncles and grandparents gather around them right now, Father, we pray your blessings over each family represented here. Lord, we pray that each one of us would seek your face, as we seek to be the best stewards of these children you've entrusted to these families. God, we pray that they would seek your face for your will in their lives. That, Father, they would model that for these young children. And, Lord, as these parents have come to this altar, and they have said that their desire is to raise this child, to give them back to you as a gift because you've given it to them. Father, we pray that they take this moment with all seriousness. And Father, that you would give them the steadfastness to fulfill the desires to raise these children in a Christian home. Father, we do dedicate these children and these families to you, the giver of life, and in whose name we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and take your seat, and as you do, I'm going to invite Wait a minute, so it'll be Nana. I'm going to invite Arlo's Nana to come up and to share a song with you. In 1993, and then again in 2002, I had the privilege of singing the song for both my babies as they were dedicated, and now to be able to sing it for your babies and for my grandson as well is, is, is an honor. And thank you for allowing me to do this today.